Mike here. So um, lately, I've been tired of a bunch of flies getting ready for October, uh, opening of the delayed harvest. Um, <clears throat> I enjoy fishing the delayed harvest, uh, especially in North Carolina, because of a few different things. Uh, number one is they release a ton of trout uh, all at once. Uh, it's the perfect time of year. Weather's cooled down a little bit. The water's cold. All that kind of stuff. But also, when they when they release that many trout into a river. Uh, one of the things they run into is that uh, food becomes more, more becomes more scarce, and um, a lot of the wild trout will begin uh, noticing that, and they start going after just about anything that uh, you know. They get hungry, they start getting a lot more aggressive, especially towards dry flies, and uh, more than anything, you know, attractor flies. You know, your copper johns, uh, like like I tied the other day. Uh, your copper johns, um, your royal humpies, uh, the green bean, which is another video that I'm going to be posting soon, which is a great little wet fly. Um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I wanted to show you a kind of an off the beat um, attractor fly uh, that I really like. And uh, I believe it's called the H and F variant. But I kind of put my own spin on it. This is a really good attractor fly. You know, it helps to kind of show the trout things they're not going to normally see all the time. And uh, this one right here is very visible. And it's a good standard shaped dry fly. You don't have to go to like a caddis pattern or uh, orange stimulator. This is actually called a sofa pillow. Another video that I'm going to be posting. So, but um, yeah, so you know, it allows you to kind of you know, mix things up a little bit. So, let's try it out. Okay, so uh, starting off, we're going to be using UTC Red and 70, and uh, this is a size 12 dry fly hook. And go ahead and start a couple spots behind the eye, and work your way about halfway back, and then come back to the halfway point from where you started your thread, and go ahead and let's trim that off. Okay, for the wing, I'm going to be using calf body hair. Uh, you can also use calf tail. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Let me see. So go ahead and cut up, cut yourself off a, a, a very generous portion. Very generous. Come over here to your waste basket if you have one. If not, you know, just make sure you get off all that under fur. And just to help me out a little bit. I got a ton of under for I'm just gonna get a dubbing brush and uh, instead of using a hair comb because a hair comb is not gonna it's not fine-toothed enough to really get all that under fur out oh, I got this stuff floating around everywhere okay and then go ahead and grab your hair stacker go ahead and funnel that in there and drop it okay and then yeah you want to open it up this way so you can go ahead and Grab the tips, and then once again, kind of make sure you got all those loose fibers out there. And, you know, like I said, get a generous amount of it. Don't be scared of it. And we're going to measure the wing out, length of the hook. Ooh, don't let it slip like I just did. Okay, length of the hook, one loose turn, pinch, hold tight. And then once you got one or two, go ahead and throw a bunch on there. And then make sure you find your hook eye. Okay, cool. And then uh, it helps if you get a pair of uh, serrated hair scissors. And then it helps you get a clean cut like that. Okay. Well, I was going to try to get my wax, but the camera's kind of in the way. I can't really reach up under it. Okay, there you go. And then uh, just kind of leave that there. You don't need to post it up just yet. Next, uh, we're gonna get some calf tail for the tail. And uh, the reason I like uh, body hair for the wing is because it's 
it stands more upright and it's easier to get stacked um, to you know get everything even. Same thing. Uh, go ahead and use your dubbing brush to kind of get out all that under fur. You know this stuff right here is just too fine for a regular comb. But the reason I like calf tail for the wing is because it uh, I mean calf tail for the body or for the uh, for the tail is because it's much more curly. Calf tail is much more curly and it's gonna give that the tail of this fly a lot more body than uh, without having to use as much material. But it doesn't quite stack up very well. It's really kind of hard. See that's about as even as I can get it with my hair stacker. So let's go ahead and and you can see I got my, my thread kind of flattened out. Helps a lot. Okay. So about one and a half times the, the gap of the the gap of hook. And go ahead and once you measure it out, go ahead and trim it so that it matches up the butt ends of the wing. And then go ahead and tie that in and just touch those turns. And having it lined up to the butt end of the wing like that. It's going to help you get that perfect taper, just like that. Now you can come up here and it's like a little, little bit like a dumbbell almost. Okay. Come in here, pull your wing back, and then make those cuts, make those turns right up under that wing. Give it that little, that little ball almost, kind of stand it up straight, and then come in here and separate it. Then grab the wings and post them up. You don't have to post them, so I'll tie it both ways, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. But um, if you don't post it, see, so like you see, this right wing right here is a posted wing, and that's a non-posted wing. So you can cause the wing to spread out more by non by not posting it. Sometimes that's a good thing. Like if you're going to fish this fly in really fast-moving water, having your wings not, uh, really wide and not not posted will actually help stand the fly upright when you when it lands on the water. Um, I'm posting these just because I'm worried more about this fly getting torn up more than anything. So, and I got a couple, where are my fine tip scissors? There we are. Got a couple that are kind of giving me a hard time here. Like that right there. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Now next, get some uh, rusty brown or brown or red turkey biots. Okay. And go ahead and go up to the top part of the biot and get your longest one. Long and skinny. Or long and wide. It's whatever you, whatever you can get. As long as it's long. Just got to be long. Um, and tear it off. Now you see how this thing curves? At the very tip, tie with the curve facing the fly. Okay, and then go ahead and wrap up. And if you uh, if you wrap biot or you wrap hackle like I do, go ahead and throw in a whip finish or a half hitch. I just use the whip finish because it's easier to get it over the wing for me. And I don't know. I have rough fingertips, so it's really hard for me to to. Uh, do a half hitch on my fingers. I just don't like doing it. Okay, and then come in here. I'm gonna use my hackle pliers. Don't try to do this. Don't don't try to wrap if you have hackle pliers like this. It'll actually end up cutting the biot. Make sure you only use it if you have hackle pliers that uh that are um uh, have like a little rubber grip to them. So wrap your biot and be generous with your spacing don't try to touch your turns too much and if you don't like how it's wrapping back it up oh, slid back on me because you want the you want the red of that thread to show through a little bit that's going to give it a little bit more of a segmented look 
and it looks ugly. I don't like that. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. You gotta have a really even body to be able to wrap biot around it. Just keep, just be patient with it. It'll get there. Sometimes I've actually had to wrap them with a uh, glue and then go back and fix it, or just kind of hold it there until it adheres to it. Yeah, it's all kind of all sliding down on me. Come on. That'll work. And don't worry if it looks bad over that hump, just give it a second. You're gonna be wrapping that part right there with a peacock in a second. Then once you got that tied off pretty good, come in here with your fine tip scissors. Trim that off and then just clean up. Okay, now uh, grab your peacock sword and get some of these big. You're gonna need uh, let's do three of these or yeah, three of these. Three strands of peacock curl from around the top part of the uh, of the sword, not quite into the eye, but just like right here on the side, right there. So those tend to be the best for this kind of application. If you're gonna use if you're gonna use a uh, peacock for like a body on a fly, you know, break off those soft ends too. Uh, if you're gonna use peacock for like the body of a fly, then you can always use like strung peacock curl. But if you're gonna use one for like this right here, where you're gonna be wrapping hackle, then uh, what? Cause I'm making a video. Sorry. Sorry, it's okay. Um, but if you're gonna use peacock curl for like this kind of application, where we're gonna use it almost like partial hackle, then go ahead and String that up. Use it from a sword. Don't use it from strong. Oh, and it broke. That's what I get for trying to hurry. No worries though. I got it saved. Okay. Now tidy up a little bit. So next then, grab your uh, whiting. Uh, any kind of dark furnace colored, dark brown will work. Um, saddle hackle or cape. And that should work. Once you know your capes pretty well and you can kind of judge, I mean every cape or saddle is gonna be different. Sometimes you may have thick feathers that'll be a size 12, Sometimes you'll have very thin pieces of hackle, and it may be a size, uh, you know, uh, 10. So, but yeah, go ahead and strip the ends off this thing and tie it in right there, real quick. Okay, and a lot of times, I don't know if you can see or not, but I have a little piece of the stem that's sticking through, through the uh, middle of the wings, and I'm gonna go ahead and tie that in right here at the eye if I can grab it loose wrap oh come on okay it's just gonna stick out there the hack will grab it okay and the next I'm just going to bring my hack will through I'm gonna make four without catching the wing make four turns in the, in the back make four or five turns up front move the wing yeah I get one more in there cool and then tie that off. Hold it. Well, let me get one more wrap with it. There we go. Okay. And pull everything back. Form your head. Then bring whip finish in. One, two, three, four, five. Aww. 
Perfect. A snip. And then I'll just apply a little bit of varnish. A little bit of head cement, you're good. I got one more sticking out right there. Got him. But yeah, that is the H&F variant. Not bad. Huh. Could have picked a little bit better Peacock, yeah. Because my other one, that's the way I like to see them. But that'll work. Cool. Thanks for watching. And take it easy. See ya. Shallow grave.